Hi, Bill Kaladze here, starting up an Iconic Masters draft again. This has been quite the format. I've enjoyed seeing a bunch of cards that I played them in their original formats, like these, a lot of the dragon cards, and there's even cards that stretch back further than, than I'm used to. Open like a mana drain or something. This pack has Austere Command, which is a six mana wrath. It's expensive, but it also has some utility of like, you don't have to kill some of your own creatures. Um, so you pick and choose some of these things. I'm going to start with that because it can really net you some card advantage and the games tend to go late. Uh, the other good cards in the pack are like the Boiler Works and the uh, one for one removal. But this kind of goes above and beyond the potential of those other cards. Obzon Falconer. An interesting one. It was very powerful in its day. Still pretty good. But I prefer the removal in this set and starting out with Austere Command. I think we go with Iona's Judgment. It's expensive. It's sorcery speed, but it deals with just about everything except for hexproof monsters. Shroud monsters. Yeah, I'll follow up our first pick with that because yeah, I really do value this removal. Okay, Bog Brew Witch, is it time? We could go into like the the life gain deck, in which case Bog Brew Witch could help find our you know, all kinds of good stuff. Oh, let's do it. <laughs> let's take this Bog Brew Witch. I've drafted a few times where I've picked up the, the cauldron and some newts, but never got the witch. Let's do it. Assault formation, that's a good one too. Yeah, we'll let someone else do that. I'm going to pick this Festering Newt, which isn't that bad on his own, but it's kind of bad. But once you start, once you start collecting the Bog Brew Witch and maybe a Sacrifice Outlet like the Cauldron, these get a lot better. So we're just going to do it. Hopefully no one else is, has the same idea here and we can kind of go nuts. Brenton Forge Tender. Just a little pro-red one-drop. Kind of a sideboard card, because it doesn't do much outside of a, a red matchup. I'm tempted by this Simic Growth Chamber. I mean, there's not much else in the pack that we really want. Balaged Scorpion's fine. The Sustainer of the Realm is fine, but shoot, even if we're in a two-color deck, even a, an, a totally off-colored land like this might be playable. Seekers, fine. I think if we're kind of going straight into black-white, then cards that can gain you life, like Seeker, get really good. So what are we trying to pick up? A lot of Festering Newts, maybe one more Witch, and then at least one Bubbling Cauldron to bring it all together. The Cauldron allows you to pay one and sack a creature, any creature, and then gain four life. Now, if that creature happens to be a Festering Newt, it also drains for force, you gain that life back. So that's kind of neat here. Eternal Thirst is interesting. There's a lot of good removal in the set, so I don't like, I don't like these auras, but another Seeker looks good. I've got to make sure I understand the austere command correctly. Destroy all creatures with converted mana cost three or less. And the other option is destroy all creatures with converted mana cost four or greater. So it's not power, it's not toughness, it's converted mana cost. So you can just get rid of everything with this. That's one option. All right, Wrench Mind, Doomed Traveler. Doomed Traveler could work out if we end up in like a, a sacrificial deck. I'll take it here, just kind of speculative. And if we pick up, oh, there's an enchantment where you, you gain life for each attacking creature. Uh, Path of Bravery, that's the one. That would go well in a deck with lots of early drops like this. And if people stay out of our deck, then, then we can make that work. Okay, Tavern Swindler, not usually very good, but it gets a lot better when life gain becomes important. So I'm going to go for that here. 
Normally, I would be happy to pick up Faltung Invocation or Evolving Wilds, but we don't even have many dragons. All right, another Newt. So we're going to try to pick up a critical mass of these Newts and make them as good as possible. Um, hopefully that works out, because otherwise it's uh, not going to be very powerful. What do we have here? Student of Ojutai. I haven't seen a very good deck for this, but if the life gain becomes important and we're playing a bunch of spells, it could be good. We'll keep that guy in mind. Okay, Eternal Thirst and Radiant Fountain. In a two-color deck, especially one that cares about life gain, the fountain gets pretty good. And Moon Glove Extract, I guess there's some matchups where that's fine. Bewilder. Okay, pack one. Uh, it looks like we're carving our place out in the, in the Newt deck. <laughs> Maybe no one else is in that. Who else is doing this? Gimli. Adge Noun Number. The Zappo. Mr. Whaley. Blaine. Afon. And we'll draft for food. So someone is paying them in a couple meals here. All right, this pack, a sweet mythic <laughs> that, that maybe we can pass up here. Necropotence, just look it up, that one's weird. Uh, Iona's Judgment is another good one. Even Frexian Rager would be good here since we are gaining a lot of life, potentially. But I'm not going to pass up on the premium removal since people are just playing their giant six mana flyers and, and bombs. So that looks good. And it gets through some walls so we can attack in with our Seekers. Ooh, a foil channel. All right, listen. <laughs> I can't pass up a foil channel, not with this art. Rebecca Guay. And who knows, you know, maybe we open... I don't think there is a, a giant payoff for channel, but... What else would we pick out of this pack? There's nothing too great. Bondkin is fine. So on the off chance it is playable in our deck, I mean, it's a limited all-star, combined with the uh, fact that this pack's just overall fairly weak. Don't get me wrong, Draconic Roar, Gruel Turf, these would be fine depending on what deck you're in, but I'm not too excited to pick up the Bondkin or the Aven. The Darksteel Axe would probably be the pick here, but that's not that exciting. There we go. Angelic Accord as a nice little life gain payoff. We only have one consistent way to get that life gain w with the Tavern Swindler, but if we pick up the Bubbling Cauldron, then anytime we sack a creature, it'll also mean getting a 4-4 Angel. So that's a good one to get here. Ooh, that's a really good one to get. Orzov Basilica, is there any other card that might be better? I don't think so. We just want to pick up this land. Heck, sometimes we'll even bring back a Radiant Fountain to cast, or to play that again. Yeah, not bad, not bad. Okay, it's drawing up here. Guided Strike is exciting because it's one way we can gain four life off our Seeker, and we it replaces itself anyway. Pretty good. This is, um, I wouldn't have known the set except by the art. I think this is from Odyssey, or that era of magic. I guess you could check on that, but yeah, Guided Strike here seems to be good. I like the Sustainer of the Realm, but I'll take Guided Strike. Ooh, Survival Cache is okay. Wing Shards is pretty tough to play around and kills a lot of things. We don't have too many ways to set up the storm ourselves, and most people play their creatures second main, unless they're playing haste creatures. But you never know. Sometimes all you need to do is kill one attacker, even if it is your, of your opponent's choice. I find that this is a format where every creature matters. People aren't going too wide, like in our deck, not every creature matters. We could just sacrifice a newt or a doomed traveler and we'd be happy with it. But in the deck like, let's see, uh, defenders or something, you're playing a bunch of walls, but they're all important. They all kind of add up to a, a giant mass. Blinding Mage is great. <laughs> Day of Dragons is funny. But yeah, if it wasn't for Blinding Mage, Butcher's Glee is easy to undervalue. It gains you a lot of life, saves your creature. 
but Blinding Mage is just a bit more consistent and cheap in this weenie strategy here. Bondkin makes it back. Balustrade Spy, also pretty neat. That's a tough one. I'm not a fan of either of these cards in this deck, but I guess we go with... I guess we go with the Spy as a little flyer. Rager's back, so that's a nice one to pick up here. And the Axe is back, so <laughs> not even punished for taking channel. All right, here's our Forge Tender and Eternal Thirst. I guess we'll take the Forge Tender because it is just that good against a red deck. Protection from red, I mean, they just can't kill it. Hunting Pack is playable. Jotty Offshoot's also good. You pretty much want to get two beasts out of the Hunting Pack, but sometimes you're getting a bunch more seven mana instant. Rune Servitor, Nature's Claim. Could target our own thing with this, but it looks like we're going to be straight two colors. I mean, this channel is tempting if we can find a way to bring it in. Oh, Butcher's Glee's back. All right. The deck is open to us. And it certainly is. This time we can take our Elish Norn. Kind of ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, this is just one of the best cards in Limited, let alone this, this format here. Falconer, another Seeker. These cards are all pretty good. I really want that one Cauldron card, but it's uncommon. This is the last pack, the last chance to to get it. Sanctuary might be worth taking here. <clears throat> yeah, we're going to get enough playables. The Nude is fine, but I'll go with the land here. And here's another Newt. Lo and behold, we have no dragon, so the life gain off Foul Tongue doesn't matter. Child of Night should be good in this deck, but let's see, unless it's carrying an axe, it doesn't do much. I'm going to take another Newt. I really want to get a Cauldron. Bog Brew Witch can kind of find one Newt a turn. So if we get one Cauldron, four Newts, and one Bog Brew Witch, that's about right for the, the Bog Brew Witch package. All right, come on. Not quite there. I think Frexian Rager here over Guided Strike. Now that we have some really powerful high end, the Command and Elish Norn, just drawing a bunch of extra cards with the Rager is exactly what we want. Angelica Chord, yeah, we really need that Cauldron to bring this together. If we don't get it, we might just have to cut all the Newts and the Bog Brew Witch. Now, it seems like this deck is open at the table. It's just not being opened. All right, another Seeker or a Chancery. I shoot for four of these Karoo lands in a draft. And yeah, I don't mind that it's half off color here. Nothing else is that exciting. All right, what now? Balagad Scorpion, Survival Cash. Survival Cash with these Seekers makes sense. We just have to be at higher life than our opponent. Then we even get to draw a card. Take another Swindler. Yeah, it's looking bad for the, the Cauldron. This is our last chance here. All right, we have two options here. We can take Sarah Angel. I'm just going to cut all the newts. Sorry, guys. Sarah Angel or another Seeker of the Way. Go all in on that. Uh, Sarah Angel's good enough. We do get it. Was this our? This was our last chance. Oh, we did it. All right, get back in here. All right, get back in here, guys. All right, here we go. Two Swindlers. I'll probably play both since they're so good with the Accord. You know, they net gain zero. But, and there's the fourth Newt. All right, we, re we really did it. So the Axe makes them a bit better. Elish Norn makes Newts into heroes. Uh, Evolving Wilds is good. Yeah, we really did it here. So that's 24. If we have three or four of these Karoo lands, you, you want to almost always go down to 16 lands. That's about right. And still play your six and seven drops. Oh, that's so good. Wing shards to survive. We can deal with any threats our opponents might have. 
Infantry Veteran. This card is great. I don't know if this is the best format for it, because it's also really aggressive. But it does exactly what you want it to do. Just kind of fragile on its own. And we might look like a pretty aggressive deck, but we're not. This deck wins the late game with its combo combo-esque uh, nature. And the spies aren't very good. Yeah, let's see. So we ended up with an off-color Simic Growth Chamber. I might not play that and just play the three 16 lands. That sounds about right. You also don't want to get stranded with an opening hand of only the Karoo lands, which can happen. Traveler's fine. It's good with the Cauldron. We don't really need to go nuts with that. Yeah, this looks good. Okay, so 9-7 as a starting point. Probably go 8-8, eight, eight, but it's going to come out in the in the other lands we put in. So Chancery for white. Evolving Wilds and Orzhov Basilica, they kind of even out. And then Sanctuary also for white. And then since we have all this white, we can maybe put in Radiant Fountain for a black. So that gives us 8, 9, even though we have four one-drop black cards. That's okay. We can search them up with Bog Brew Witch later. And activating the Witch costs colorless, so that is nice. All right, I hope this deck is good, but even if not, I'm definitely happy with it. <laughs> because we get to play with all these festering newts. And kind of the combo, we've got the cauldron, now you can read it here, sack a creature, gain four life, sack a newt, drain four life, and then with the accord that becomes an angel, and then all kinds of good stuff. All right, let's go newts. Uh-oh. Okay, opponents down to six, I think we'll join them. And mulliganing in this format is not as scary as usual because you can just draw your bounce land and get back on your feet and this hand's good ish <laughs> it's kind of good we want to try to scry towards a black source but once we're there we're in good shape yeah let's put that on the bottom we already have one which is going to come out on turn three most likely that helps so now we can yeah, let me think. Yeah, now we can decide on turn two whether to play the Chancery or Seeker. And if we play the Chancery, we want to return Radiant Fountain, so I like playing that instead of Plains there. Oh, this is a green-white aggro deck. Basilica. Yeah, let's... Let's actually get the Basilica into play, because we're not going to be able to block their Seeker, and we don't even have a good or a consistent prowess trigger for the seeker, for our own Seeker. Next turn we can do two things. We get our Newt and Seeker, and two more life. Oh boy, we're taking five, they gain five. And they draw a card. So that's that. Gain some life back here. Yeah, so let's get a Newt and a Seeker. And then they need another spell to, to keep going here. Yeah, they're just gonna they're just coming in here. All right, well, we'll see what they got. I mean, the newt trades for the seeker unless they have a spell, but I don't mind that. Oh, they're gaining trample too. Wow, this is just this is like a Jeskai deck, but it's green white instead of 
a blue red or like an is it deck hmm Well, we can start gaining our own life, gain a bunch of life this turn, and they're going to be a, a, an incredible life total too, but now I just don't want to die. I think they're trying to be aggressive more than anything, and we have some good stuff in the late game. Yeah, so our best bet here, get the newt out, equip this little axe, turn the tides. So this newt can block again. We've got two more newts in the deck. And if they want to wild size and use up their turn, then they can be my guest. Jeez. How many wild sizes do they have? Too many. It uses up their turn. I mean, certainly they'll draw more wild sizes, but at least we're not dead. Okay, starting to get a little crazy. Four. Yeah, I'm just going to bring back our fountain and then hold up this seeker on defense. We're kind of restricted on black here, so I guess we'll just go in for Butcher's Glee. What is this? Enlarge, they say. Eight. Oh no, we don't have quite enough to kill it. It's going to work out kind of well, but we're one short power of killing. No, we get prowess of our own, so we do kill it. Eight. Oh, it's ten. Never mind. We're not even close. But we still have to block, and I would like to save it. How did I miscount that? Oh, it's plus seven, plus seven. I was thinking plus five, plus five. So we're taking net three or something? Something like that. Judgment. Well, good card. But we don't have a great target for it. Gains us some life. Get the swindler out there. And then we can attack for four because I don't want to block with the seeker. And then maybe we'll just block with our tavern swindler. And if they set up some giant monster like a big old angel we can use the judgment there and attack for five again. Carven Karyatid. Drawing more cards. Yep, here they come. <laughs> 39 to 16. I guess we're on blocking duty now. Oh, give me a break. Another wild size. We're at 13. No, we're at less than that because the, it also gives trample. I guess we're at 10 then. There are 11. All right, so that's four wild sizes, two seekers. What a homogenous deck over there. Guided strikes pretty good. I don't know. I think we can use Guided Strike better later. Like on defense. Gain five here. It's possible they kill us next turn. They could have another enlarge. Not everyone at the table is going to be drafting those, and they. They had it wide open here. A 
13, yeah, enlarge and one more card would do it. And this is the creature we should have killed with Iona's Judgment. We have one more in the deck, Ivy Elemental. I guess we can still beat that. Cauldron, cool. Yeah, Cauldron it gives us a prowess trigger. And then they attack back for 10. Yeah, let's just block because they want to attack with Ivy Elemental past our Seeker, but Guided Strike deals with that nicely. They're gonna have their own Iona's Judgment here. No, this makes Ivy Elemental too big to block. So instead we just block one of the Seekers. So we take nine and gain six. And then if we draw Newt, we can kill the veteran and then go from there. It would have been, yeah, it probably would have been better to use the Radiant Fountain for mana and hold up a black in case we draw something, but I guess it didn't end up mattering here. Forty-two to eight, Lotus Cobra. Okay. Planes. Okay. Yeah, I guess that's that's game. We can survive another turn by jumping, but then they just have too big of a board, and we've got more lands on top. So I like the matchup in general. It just didn't work out there. Try again. All right, let's take the play. Let's try to make this work. We don't need to rush out our Festering Newt. I mean, it's it's not going to come down to Newt aggro here. So instead, we'll try to get some white mana. We also have our Accord. So one of our combo pieces. The Newt is good against the Veteran. Oh, what to do here? Because we're not going to be able to do anything next turn unless we play this Basilica. Oh well, things came out a little out of order. Yep, so we take one, but that's not the end of the world. This turn we can go Rager, or even Survival Cash, because they get in three. We go to 21, then we go down to 18, then 20. You have to have more life, though, so that doesn't work out as well as we might like. Okay, get the Rager, <laughs> take even more damage, and now they have a nice attacker. Ooh, but the cash is really good when you have Seeker of the way in play because you get double prowess triggers off it or at least one per turn. Yeah, I know about I know about this guy. They still hit us for the full amount here. And they held up Wild Side? Why would they do that? I guess they knew they were going to put the counter on the guide itself. Does that make sense? Now then, two newts and a seeker. Get all our newts in play. And that lets us attack, I guess, with the rager. I think that works out. Wild side is going to be bad for us. 
and they have at least four in their deck. I mean, they played four last game, and that was, what, half their library? So easy attack here with everything. Uh, if it's only one thing coming in, their plan might be to... Pump the veteran with wild side, but that's fine. Why even pump it? Yeah, I guess they're they're using wild side on Timberland guide. I don't know. Don't ask me. I would guess this thing gets saved. No. All right, the newt really got there. It really did it. Ivy elemental as a three three. Well, that's not a big deal. Oh, we have nowhere near as much life as they do. So, survival catch gets a lot worse. Now that's a shame. Um, we could still use it for the prowess trigger, but we'll save it because Angelica Chord gets better after that. All right, not the most exciting turn. And I really want to get Tavern Swindler in play, but that's not very mana efficient. All right. We can't have it all. So let's play Sarah Angel and go from there. Very little we can block with this. I guess we could try to block a Timberland guide with it. Or they just have their own judgment. Good card. What a crazy attack here. Probably a good attack, but still kind of crazy if you ask me we block the most damage this way and we get to kill the ivy elemental so i think that's worth it yeah so land here wouldn't be the worst because that lets us go Hmm. We could get an angel with the Accord this turn if we give up the card from Survival Cash, which might... No, we can't do that. I don't know. But let's, let's just get an Accord into play. We almost gain enough life this turn, but we don't quite. Any life is better than none. Oh, come on. This is ridiculous. So seven, we take nine. We never get our value out of the swindler. And we're at seven, so the cash will never be any good. We get one angel next turn. We gain five total. Blinding mage. because we'll have gained five this turn. And then 14, we won't even gain the life next turn. We'll get an angel next turn, but yeah, we won't draw the card off the cash. The, I mean, the cash, high variance. A lot of, the, a lot of times it's gonna work out. Actually, it will work out this turn if they if they uh, sack something into our angel, but maybe they just kill it some other way. Yeah, I guess they would attack with just one? I think they have to attack with both here. And our blinding mage is worth more than a card. So, I mean, obviously they have wild side, but at least we trade off our angel here. Not too bad. Yeah, problem here is we just don't have more life than they do. Cast it? Yeah, let's cast it. Get another angel. Stop their guide from attacking so no more wild side tricks and we can start attacking with our own angel. 
Not a bad deal. Seven mana for two angels, more or less. A Johnny's Pride Mate. That's <laughs> one that would have been good in our deck. Wing Shards, okay. It's not one that gains us any life. Well, it could gain us three life, but not quite enough. Um, and then it'd be kind of useless. So we'll just hold that up here and then tap down whatever this next turn. We can always tap down a blocker if it comes to that, so I don't mind them attacking here really. So let's let them cast Wild Side on their Pride Mate, and then we'll have them sacrifice it out from under the Wild Side. Yes. So they don't draw a card. Sacrifice two <laughs> creatures. Okay, so they'll give that game to us. Not bad. And they'll give the next game to us, too, if I have my way. Sustainers are okay. It becomes a 2-5 blocker. So against a Prowess 2-2 two -two with Wild Side, it dies. So that's not, that's not ideal for us. Moon Glove Extract actually might be good here. Over what? Gosh, the real deal is to get Elish Norn. And too late for that. Yeah, their deck can't beat Elish Norn unless they exile it, but it could wipe their whole board before they get to exile anything. Yeah, good hand. Maybe we'll get to gain some or draw some cards off the cash. Looks like it. This is one of our most busted openings. Seeker into cash. They've got their own secret. No, Pride Mate. Uh, that's a little awkward, but not too bad. Because I don't see how they gain life this next turn. But the problem is when they do gain life, Survival Cash could get worse. Wild Side, of course. Which would make the pride made a, a formidable blocker so I'm glad they don't have that here and no 1-1 one, one counter so they are just getting yeah they're not really getting it all there yeah let's go for it they'll get to block our seeker I don't see a good way around it unless we just didn't attack then they do five to us. No, this works out. We attack here. They trade off, we go to 25. And then we'll draw another card off survival cash. So kind of like a three for one or three for two. Lotus Cobra after playing a forest, a little sketchy but I guess they don't have any three drops. Nice, look how good it <laughs> survival cash is. All right, what do we do here? Getting Blinding Mage into play sounds good, but I also want something that can just block a Johnny's Pride Mate. Yeah, I'll get Blinding Mage into play. And then we can play out one of our lands drawn a lot of cards here and then maybe we fetch before we draw holding up 
white for a tap. And this is six mana. <laughs> They're going to get to Elish Norn before we do, if they have it. Blue. Just for fun, I guess. Yeah, big old Ivy Elemental. Do we want to trade here? Uh, I think not. I think we need something to tap that giant elemental. Did not need another land there, that's for sure. Now we'll get another land. Go all the way down to 20 and get another, another land. Goodness, have you ever seen as many lands as this? 12 lands to four cards and we're playing 16 lands in the deck. So we have four lands and 24 cards, which is not many. And they have one card left, probably not even a wild side. We have seven cards left. Little did they know, they're all lands. They know at least one of them's a land. Get our little newt in here. Gain some life. And that gets us more life off the chancery much later. So again, we just tap the ivy elemental and that's the force they returned last turn so there's two unknowns over there guide makes the lotus cobra a little bigger or maybe seeker sure let us tap and of course they have wild side in hand so this is going to go really poorly for us or they exile something also very bad for us yeah this is this is real bad but we need to tap the seeker so they don't gain life for their pride mate and they're happy enough to just trade off their pride mate now come on if we draw land I don't know what I'm gonna do I'll flip the table and we don't even have a table Flip some coins soon. All right, are they top decking like a like a pro, or do we get some some reprise here? I think we just have to block, like. Shoot. <laughs> well, hey, there's a little newt friend to help us out. That can chump something. That'll chump the ivy elemental and kill the guide. To make sure they aren't gaining life with the seeker. Or we could save him for a turn and, and maybe he gets better. The problem is, to make him good, we need to draw multiple things. The Bog Brew Witch is all we really need on its own. Yeah, let's just tap down the Ivy Elemental. And if they come in with both... I think we just don't block here. We have to save him for, for greater glories. Otherwise, we're just too far behind. Yeah, the Cauldron makes it a little better but it's still not quite perfect. Give him one more turn here. Because if we get the witch off the top, then we're, we're doing all kinds of good stuff. Their turn to draw a bunch of land. Hunt the weak. Yep. All right. 
So how exactly do we want to do this? Let's tap IV Elemental, though it doesn't really matter. Oh no, it does matter. Oh, I messed it up, because they're going to have Wild Side here. Or they could have Wild Side. Oh, let's just use it to sack the mage. And then maybe, maybe not block here. They're happy enough to attack with both, and I think we just can't block. Butcher's Glee. What on earth? I guess that's okay. It'll generally be able to, to kill the Seeker. Unless they have Wild Side. Mind Crank? Oh, great. Yep, so that is a 4-4 four, four Seeker. We're going to be milled for 7. And they're just playing around Butcher's Glee? They're playing around Butcher's Glee? That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why would they? Why, how does that make any sense? Of all, like... Who plays around Butcher's Glee? Hmm. Because there's something else there that does the same thing? I don't know. Drawing more newts. I don't know what we can do here. I think we just try to kill all their creatures. Get milled for seven. And then maybe draw an answer to the Ivy Elemental and we're back to top decking. Wing shards would have been nice. Austere command would have been nice. Elish Norn off the top. Bog Brew Witch is gone. I guess the Angel's okay. Could be worse. And then we take six, get milled for six, and then if Elish Norn is third from the bottom, we might have a chance. Of course, Wildside also kills us here. It doesn't necessarily kill us. She's still there. She's still in the deck. Come on, deck. What did they do? They tapped four. Yeah, Nintuko Shaman next turn. Okay. Guided Strike. Well, let's start with that. Come on, Elish Norn. Yes! So that attacks for seven. And then this thing immediately dies next turn. And their IV Elemental is smaller. They just need to get one Trample damage in here. Effectively, because we can sort of kill them in two turns. They're going to chain Wild Sides and get us that way. Four, five, six, seven, eight... They trample over for one on Sarah Angel. That's pretty bad. So we have to double block the Ivy Elemental. Lose Sarah Angel, and then we don't have enough cards left in our deck to win. So no wild side, please. Duskwood Bailoth. Yep. Well, that's good news. Iona's Judgment. We have to use that to get in uh, an attack this turn.
and then hope they don't draw anything because we need to kill them next turn. So we get in six down to 11 if they block here. No, they'll take it all. They're taking it all. What's our last card? I, I should count it out. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So it's not a land. That's good. Is it a newt? It's a newt. Unless a newt is exiled. No, a newt's exiled. Okay, the newt would have won off the cauldron. Yes. Oh my god. We got milled down to the perfect answers. Can you believe it? That was as close as a game can get. All right, Ghost, 18. We're on the play. Yes, on the play, these lands are a lot better. And then we can just figure out what to do with our cards later. Seven, seven land hand here. One removal spell. What do we start with here? I think it makes sense to start with a swamp in case we draw a newt and want to do the basilica or the chancery. Ghost has been <laughs> using some of their early time, so I don't know if they're here or not, but okay, it looks like they are. They're here for now. And yeah, we'll just get the Basilica into play. Nothing else to do here. As long as that doesn't put you over eight cards in hand, then you want to do it as early as you can. So far as it doesn't interfere with your other plays. <laughs> We're just getting beaten down by a, a Phantasm. Haven't been milled yet. But that can just happen naturally. Once we have 10 or more cards in our graveyard, the game goes long enough. That'll just happen. Even if they're not trying to mill us out specifically. Wilds. Gonna mill ourselves a bit here. Thin our deck a bit. And yeah, let's get a white. No big deal. This turn. They've got all this counter magic up. They've got they've got all kinds of nonsense. I'm not gonna put in Uh, a bounce land this turn because they might just have mana leak or something. We can play around it. We might as well. And this is going to be two damage to blinding mage. And let's save it. Nothing else to do here. They still get to draw the card, but they don't get to kill our blinding mage, and that's the important thing. Hoarding dragon, great. Uh, when it dies, they get the card back. So we're going to exile it and not worry about it. And what do they get? Mannequin. So it's not even a great card, but it's worth getting rid of. And instead of getting our newt out, it might be better to get the newt out. I'm just going to tap down the phantasm. Make sure we get some value from our blinding mage this game. Another Hoarding Dragon. I guess this used to be a rare card. Now it's uncommon. You can get a bunch of them. Ooh. Six. Seven. This is seven. <laughs> we have it. We have Elish Norn. And that just kills Phantasm. They can't counter it. Let's do it. Attack our Blinding Mage into a Hoarding Dragon. Easy. All right, um, yeah, <laughs> hopefully they don't steal it or bounce it or anything else. Seven to fireball it, they need eight mana total. 
consecrated sphinx. Well, that's just perfect. And beats our Elish Norn. <laughs> well, well, shucks. And they didn't play Dark Steel Ox. Of course they didn't. It's still, it's still under the uh, hoarding dragon. Okay. Um, yeah, what to do here? We could kind of bluff by attacking with the Blinding Mage. They might not block. Then we take a couple more damage. I think that's fine. Oops. I think that's fine to, to risk taking a couple more damage to potentially get in three more. Yeah, so they're not going to risk it. Good bluff. All right. We've got some big creatures out here. Hopefully that those two cards didn't find them an answer to Elishnorn. It's the only thing holding this game together. It's just going to be a giant fireball, maybe. Don't do it. They have just enough here. Claustrophobia? What? <laughs> okay. Okay, and we get just nothing. Let them draw a hundred more cards, but they had a plan here, and I'm not so interested to find out what it is. So I'll come in with the newt, sure. And I'll take the three off the newt, and then blinding mage can stop them from attacking. Or maybe we let them attack and then see what happens. Yeah, come in with whatever you want. <laughs> All right, and then we tap down the aerialists because that's kind of the scariest one. They've got five cards in hand. Whoops, scratch that. Now it's seven. Well, looks like they're going to have to block. What spell is going to do four damage, five damage to Elish Norn? Diminish. <laughs> that would do it. That's not good. That is not ideal. This is what I get for not knowing the format so well. Of course, they have every card in the format now that they've drawn like six or eight cards off of one card. It's also a 4-6 flyer in its own right. If we draw a Bubbling Cauldron, we win. Electrolyze. Never mind, now they kill both our newts, and that doesn't win. Hopefully they go after Blinding Mage. That's fine. Come on, Bubbling Cauldron off the top. GG. Not even Mana Leak stops that. No, it's just another lousy newt. All right, looks like they got us. Whoops. I assume they'll make a lethal attack. There's nothing we can do about it. Let's see if it was coming up. Okay, it might have been 
bad to attack with Elish Norn. We could have just kept it in play and won that way. I'll, I'll admit that. Now we know. <laughs> Diminish. We got all kinds of newts in this hand. You know what? I'm just going to keep it. This is the first time we've had two pieces of the puzzle together, even if we don't have any lands. We'll draw lands. Just play out a bunch of newts first. All right, newt number one. Fire it up. Come on, maybe a tap land? All right, well, we drew a land. Can't be too greedy when you start with a one land hand on the play. You, you've already been greedy enough. But that was a good draw. Bounce land. Any bounce land is just the best card in our deck right now. What's this? It's nothing. That's what it is. Hmm, what's that going to be? All right, let's use Guided Strike on Tavern Swindler. Mana Leak, sure. I'd rather attack here. Get in two damage than is better than gaining zero <laughs> most of the time. Okay, land is good. We would have drawn land last turn to get our extra newt in play. Can't have it all. Prowess. Oh, just another Jesse and Thief. Well, that's fine. Tails, obviously. You won! All right, 23. Whoa! Yes, that's good. Bubbling Cauldron, now we're going to gain all the life. If we can just hold out a little longer, because I don't want to sack all these newts yet. Electrolyze all the newts? Come on. Why do they have to do that? Sure. One of those thieves gets a bit smaller, but it could have killed the thief if we just curved out here. Then what? Yeah, this is dumb. We could have put one on each, but it's the same result nearly. That's not great. Once once your opponent draws a card with Jesse and Thief, it's just over. Mannequin. Sure, so let's get Bog Brew Witch out. And if we untap with this, maybe there's a chance. Maybe they don't have another spell in hand. Claustrophobia. Oh, great. That's not good. So now they draw two cards. Another Electrolyze. See if we can gain some life. Uh, it's obviously Tails again. Yeah, we won again. But okay, so now we have nothing left. We have four life from our Cauldron. Uh, we can use Judgment to take out something. And then I guess Austere Command could, could bring us back into it if they haven't, if they haven't gotten uh, counter magic. Accord is not terrible. But look at how good this, <laughs> this would have been if we'd drawn land. In between, we could have had the Accord, Cauldron, Witch, and two Newts. So that equals a lot of life and a lot of angels. 
and a lot of dead opponent's creatures. But yeah, now they're gaining two more cards off this. Ooh. Okay. Festering Newt. And we've got all the pieces. We've got all the pieces here. Ah, but we could we could get an angel this turn. Or we could get one next turn. Let's get one this turn. Sacrifice our newt. Kill a thief. And then we'll get our angel. Careful not to do this on your opponent's end step, though. So I'll put a stop on their main. Yo, bro, they say. Oh, I don't care about you losing life. I just want to gain life. But thank you. <laughs> I've never, you know, I've never used this. I've tried to go for this option um, so many times and uh, it's never actually come up. I've never had the ability. Okay, you would gain life. I know I would gain life, but I'm trying to I'm trying to be you know, in in the spirit of good sportsmanship. I don't want you to lose too quickly. Goodness gracious. Oh my goodness, they're going to write me an essay explaining <laughs> what I can read on this card. I would be at eight right now, they say. I'm pretty sure I only sacked one newt off this. Oh no, I would have, uh, I sacked two. Well, they're totally right, by the way. You know what I want to do? I want to kill all the enchantments with austere command. We probably just kill all creatures and that's better. if we ever get there. Okay. So. Let's kill the aerialists. Phantasm. Austere Command is so good. It kills our Angel, but it also kills the Claustrophobia and all of their other creatures. They're just going to counter it, but if they don't, that's a way back into the game. Literally anything counters it, though. From Flusterstorm to Mana Leak. Oh, and they, they're actually just getting Mana Leak back into their hand. Give me a break. Fantastic. Maybe they'll tap out next turn. I should really, <laughs> I should really get their goat here. I'll, I'll tap and untap Bubbling Cauldron, and I'll be like, I can't use the second option. And they'll patiently explain to me, oh, you have to have a newt into play. You can't, <laughs> you can't sacrifice anything. Sorry, I, I don't know. That's just a bit of... That's just a little cute. Also, we're like... For newts. <laughs> Technically, only festering newts. Not any salamander. Oh, thanks. Huh. 
Oh well. If we're gonna lose this game, at least we're gonna <laughs> have fun doing it. Why did they have to have exactly the mana and exactly the cards to counter austere command? Because we're not gonna survive enough turns for, for that to be good. Yeah, we'll we'll figure out how our bubbling cauldron works eventually. Alright, um <clears throat> Consecrated Sphinx. Oh great. Probably should have sacked the Bog Brew Witch there. I don't know, we're we're super dead. Okay, they get to draw a hundred cards. <clears throat> oh wait, 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 don't F6. We need another another bunch of life. So we get two angels to block. Yeah, that's what we need. Just tap out. Just don't leave any mana up. Okay. So we're still not dead here, and everything they tap down is going to give us maybe another angel at some point. Or are we dead? Frost links. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. No, we're not dead. But they keep leaving up counter magic. So just two more turns of drawing lands, and maybe we can play Austere Command. Or mill them out. They have to draw when they hit with the thief. Oh, that's good. If they play a bunch first main. Like to kill our angel or something. Then we can use wing shards to kill two one ones. Good deal. And they can't even counter it. It'd almost be good if they did counter it. Mr. Festering Newt. Come on, kill us already. I don't have, <laughs> I don't have time to do all this. Actually, so what if they just attacked with the Sphinx? Because it's the only thing that really does get to attack in here. Then it would die. No, they're gonna, they're not going to be that silly. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I want them to cast a spell. Diminish, they say. Sure. That's no problem. Anything else? Dang. So they have to sack two things. So goodbye mannequin, goodbye frost links. Uh, same targets, because it's targeting them. Tap out. Illusory angel. Come on. No. <laughs> We're holding up two. I mean, obviously, it's a good idea. All right. We did it. We got a festering newt, and this time, they're going to lose. They're going to lose all kinds of life. Yeah, mana leak that guy. So what does festering newt do? It kills Hoarding Dragon and gives them... Oh, they didn't get a card with Hoarding Dragon. And then Chase's Phantasm is getting really close to being giant. Oh, we don't have our Bog Brew Witch anymore, so we just have to <laughs> go after the Phantasm. Well, shucks. All right, so that's two angels in play. 
And maybe they'll tap out this turn, but anything that would make them tap out would also kill us, like Fireball. This is about our best bet to survive. Another Electrolyze would kill us. Diminished It's pretty close. We're at one. But they have eight cards in hand. I think we might have lost. No, they're not going for it. Just yet. They might have... They might just have Burn Face... One mana spell. Another Consecrated Sphinx. You can play multiples. River Wheel Aerialists. Alright, they've got two cards left. We could win if they choose to draw. <laughs> if they choose to draw off, off our draw. Come on. No, they didn't misclick. They could also lose if if they don't counter this. Come on. Don't counter it. Maybe they're typing GG. No, that counters it. All right. They got us. Round three, let's see if we can bring it home with some good combos here. Yeah, not a good hand. This hand is better. But needs black. It's just going to be the sanctuary here easiest way to get our survival cash going and if they don't have any good aggro here we're going to draw two cards off the cash which is nice maybe that'll help us get watch them draw three life in response or something yeah hopefully we can get black coming up soon Yeah, even doesn't matter much. Foil life gain. Just put the axe on. They might go after the seeker. They attack with the Aven first and then they do hunt the weak. And then they'll have like a 3-5 fighting our 4-2. Our that would suck. But it's a common. They could easily have it here. Dynamo. That doesn't look like it. Still scary though. Three colors. Infinite mana next turn. just go for some regular old ground attack here. The other play is just Cauldron and gain 5, but that's not as important, and it's much less efficient. Main phase Evolving Wilds. Why not? 7. Probably a giant... Ooh, a giant Savage-born Hydra. So Wing Shards is going to show its worth coming up here pretty soon. Yeah, let's just get that equipped. And hopefully they just attack with the Hydra alone, or even better, play a spell and then attack with both. Some removal for the angel. Oh no. Pro white. 
Our white spells won't kill it anymore. Oh well. Now I want them to attack with both. They're just going to make it way too big. They could kill us this turn. Goodness. If they had a another kind of pump spell. Otherwise it's 16 if they tap out. Wouldn't that be something? Yeah, you might as well go all in. Karyatid. Now they have to sack three attacking creatures. Oh well, no blockers. Sack a couple attacking creatures. And that dealt with that well enough. All right, so here, yeah, we'll save Iona's judgment for the next big thing. Here, we could re-equip re the axe to the Seeker. Or just get in for six. I think it's actually better to re-equip and attack. Because Sarah Angel gets them down to six anyway, so it's lethal next turn. They always have the option of blocking or double blocking. And if they block with the, the Karyatid and the Aven on the Seeker, then we kill the Aven and then it's um, lethal next turn no matter what. Sure. We hope. Means we have to spend mana to equip, to re-equip the axe, so it's not all upside, but at least we're at 28. Yeah, so they would have still had an Aven in play. Oh wow, five more mana? Just a Timberland guide. So what are they doing? Equipping on the Aven? That would be funny to see. No, they'll just... Because they have to block with the Aven here anyway. Let's make it lethal. Take a chance. Take a chancery. Wow, all the Timberland guides. This white green deck, I guess it's Naya, but it's just kind of like a 1-1 a one -one counters matter aggro deck. It's not very exciting. I don't think it's the best you can do in this format. I'd rather be playing all removal and good stuff. Yeah, so how are they going to swindle themselves out of this? I think we just attack here. But if they have their own wing shards, we can sack our angel. And they, they do. It's not a newt, so we don't have to use the, the secret second ability. But now we go accord, and we have gained a bunch of life this turn, so we'll get another angel. Sarah Angel, this is a different angel. <laughs> this is Urza Angel. Oh boy. We'll take it all. I'm sure they have some kind of wild side. We know we know about that card. But as long as they don't have more wing shards. It is wild side. <laughs> Of course it is. Of course it is. And they tap their red there. That might mean all their red spells are just really expensive. 
or this is their only one. And now there's just nothing in the format that stops this. I don't think fog is in it. There's nothing. Uh, I guess there is a, a thing that kills a flyer and gains two life. So there is that. Moon Glove Extract. That's a, the kind of card we want. And they have red. That's kind of funny. The Forge Tender just single-handedly takes down that Hydra. So even if that's their only red card, it's kind of funny to play it. Or if they tap down the tender somehow, we can prevent all that damage once. Sure, the newts are good. Yeah, we don't need the extract. We've got a bunch of newts. Don't have time for the extract. Survival cash. I'll take that out on the draw. I like the card. But if we're getting beaten down by their aggro deck, it gets a lot worse. Sure. Oh no. So you're on the draw with these Karoo lands, and eventually you have to play one. So I want to cast a spell first so we don't have to discard to hand size. That'll do. So that catches us, us up. So we drop to seven, and then even if we have nothing to do, we can play a bounce land. Take two. No, oh, that's even better. So Newt, Basilica, because it's just the best land to get into play. And then we can stop that pesky guide from attacking or stop something from blocking. I don't want to trade off the Newt. Like, we want to trade our Newts as late as possible so we can get more value out of them. Oh, shoot. Well, I misclicked, but they didn't want to trade with our Newt anyway. And now we next leveled ourselves. Now they think we want to trade the Newt off. Someone got next leveled by someone. Yeah, let's just uh, bog brew. Attack with everybody. And if we untap with bog brew, that should be it, because we have four things to search search up with it. One a turn. Carven Karyatid, the original Karyatid in Magic. Ooh, that's great. So, Radiant Fountain. Get our Cauldron. Oh, it comes into play tapped. Okay, I didn't know how that card worked either. So we should have just done that on their turn. Indeed, it says, put it onto the battlefield tapped. Oh no, what is this? Hunt the weak. Um, well, that's convenient. So our witch lives, and it kills their guy and gains us four. Stumbling into easy wins here. Get a little newt. Let's get these every turn while we can. And no reason to attack. We could have attacked with Blinding Mage if they block. We drain four and then kill the Karyatid with no risk to our mage, but I'd rather just tap it here. Our newts are too precious, and we finally got it going. The 
positioning our deck from all the newts and all the the other stuff. All right, so do we use this now? We could kill the Aven. I guess it's worth it, and we'll even use the the right ability. So they lose life. We're learning, see? I guess we'll attack with the witch. We do have a couple more newts to find, but we just don't have the mana here. I'd rather hold up Blinding Mage and possibly a, a newt sack. <laughs> that sounds sounds about right. Um, yeah, sure. So I'll also just sack anything that they, they go after. They gain less life. And we gain a bunch of life. That'll do. Don't kill our witch. Okay, they're not killing our witch. Thank goodness. Nothing here is worth using Iona's judgment on. But it's worth using a newt on. Sack our newest newt. Killed a spider. So one of our newts gets to attack in. And then we can hold back Blinding Mage. Cool. So they're not dead. They might be dead next turn, but I don't think they are. It depends how much we get to attack with. Good lord. Yeah, I guess they lose. Right, because we just exile that, attack with everything, and sack a newt. And that'll do it. Nice pull, though. Foil Jugen. <laughs> we can really do it all here. We have one more newt, right? So let's let's get our last newt. Goodbye, newt. Did I do the right ability? I hope so. How many newts did you get? <laughs> Four one one. We, we finally did it. All right, this was the newt draft. We we really got there. Thank you for watching, and good luck in your drafts.